Today I am going to present an overview of geophysical methods of electrical resistivity and self-potential and their usage in agricultural mapping and monitoring. Geophysics studies uh, natural physical fields which exist on Earth. This can be gravitational fields, thermal fields, hydraulic fields and electrical and electromagnetic fields. Fields. Those fields influence all the matter and all the living organisms on Earth, including soils and plants, which are the main interest for agriculturals, of course. But the problem is that scale of measurements in agriculture is much smaller than in conventional geophysics. So, to use uh, electrical geophysical methods in agriculture, uh, we can bring to their uh, studies a lot of benefits. First of all, all of those methods are non-destructive. So we don't need to collect soil samples, we can just take measurements from the soil surface. Also, methods are very fast. But, however, all the methods are non-direct. They don't directly measure the properties of interest of agricultures, such as um, soil bulk density, for example, or um, pH, and so on. They measure parameters of electromagnetic fields, uh, such as uh, natural um, electrical potential, also called self-potential, electrical conductivity or resistivity. Um, that's what we are going to be talking about um, in depth in those about two, two, two of those properties. They also can measure induced polarization and dielectric constant, but those properties were not very popular in agricultural applications. Uh, however, as I told, measuring uh, self-potential with standard geophysical equipment in agriculture is uh, very difficult. You can see uh, such a big electrodes which need grounding and uh, pouring um, conductive solution around them. The equipment is very big and difficult to apply to their um, soil um, samples or plants. That's why in our studies uh, we um, used and adapt um, uh, medical mini electrodes that can be used with a land mapper device and measure electrical potential between plants and soil. Um, what do those um, uh, self potential and electrical resistivity or conductivity measure um, the differences? And those differences exist in soils uh, because there is a difference in density of mobile electrical charges in soils. And so those electrical parameters uh, relate exponentially with amount and mobi mobility of electrical charges according to Boltzmann law of statistical thermodynamics. Um, that law uh, presents that the density of uh, charges and their energy is exponentially related with the potential and the absolute temperature. And Nelson, in um, 1972, adopted those for soil water, for example. Uh, we can uh, follow through the derivation and we'll see that soil water content is exponentially related with um, uh, electrical resistivity and can be any other property as well. So in plants, um, they react to atmospheric electricity um, there was shown the electrotropism of plant roots. It means uh, the root grows toward negative electrical potential. And this is unrelated of gravitational effect as was proven in, uh, by NASA in growing plants in out of space. Also, there is a micro potential exist in elect um, and due to differences electrical charges in plant cells or animal cells. So basically everything around us is um, has electrical potential differences and has electrical properties. For example, we measure electrical, uh, natural electrical potential in the rose canes in greenhouse rose production. We'll see that electrical potential in millivolts was kind of stable, a little bit high during the active growth, and then when the uh, rose canes were ready for production, um, for the, um, like cutting the canes for propagation, the potential drops. And for the production, like for the bouquets, we were cutting the canes uh, when the potential was uh, relatively high and it was for all different varieties of roses. So we proved that electrical potential 
um, difference between soil is plants is always negative. Um, so plants have a higher potential than soil. And electrical uh, potential dec decrease in a row from flower to leaf to stem. Um, a lot more information is available in the new uh, publication uh, by Poznikov in Eurasian Soil Science in 2013. There it was uh, proven that uh, self potential between a topsoil and a growing plant is highest in the spring and then it decreases um, toward the fall when uh, the plants are in Russia, in Moscow, ready for dormancy. Also, um, there are natural electrical potential between soil horizons or between layers of artificial growth media and those um, potential influence plant growth. We artificially created a horizontal um, drift of self, uh, for electrical potential in soil with uh, metal spikes at the middle row. And then we can see that uh, onion would kind of curve over that potential and the best growth was in the middle row. Uh, from the highest potential difference. So, in soils, um, we can um, also use self potential measurements uh, to create the map of subsurface water fluxes and find the potable um, uh, places for potable water wells. Also, the electrical potential differences exist between oil horizons. And we used um, self potential and electrical resistivity methods to detect clogged trains. Um, if you know that um, the art of dozing goes uh, back of um, thousands and thousands um, years, uh, so basically it's nothing more than um, the sensitive person, the medium, kind of measuring the um, subtile electrical potential of the water flux under the ground. And if you go to the website of American Society of Dozers, it says that um, anybody can be a medium, but you have to be a trained uh, disability. Well, the advantage of the uh, LandMapper device is that everybody can use it, and it's measure a um, very small um, uh, fluc fluctuation of electrical poten potential in the topsoil. So using that device, um, we found that place for that uh, water well in um, uh, Moscow suburb and that actually there was a, a professional dozer who um, first went around the area and also pointed to the both of locations uh, we choose that one. Um, a lot of soils as you know have layers and uh, because of um, um, soil forming processes and what the soil forming processes do like process of alluviation it leaches out the electrical charges uh, down the soil profile and create the horizons different in the electrical example, properties. In um, humid zone, there is alpha soils, mollusols, and histosols. And if we, we did measure different um, electrical potentials and electrical resistivity uh, but, uh, in those um, alluvial horizons and alluvial horizons, different texture, uh, gray horizons, and sandy. So we can see that resistivity as according to the Ohm's law is directly related um, to their um, electrical potential. The higher resistivity also implies the higher potential differences in the soils. And it's related with, of course, cation exchange capacity or humus content and so on. In New Jersey pine lands, uh, there is an area um, with alpha soils and very sandy soils and they yes. grow cranberry. Uh, what happens they, if the drainage is not good enough, the, the production field drops and you can see it here is um, um, waterlogged conditions. So we uh, did um, measure electrical resistivity map on the surface and also yields on the same uh, cranberry beds. As you can see that waterlogged situation has lower resistivity and has reduced yield and also has reduced electrical potential. Basically, those are the area where um, Phytophthora root rot develops and uh, future um, worsen the yield. Basically, the condition was to um, put the drainage um, trenches there uh, because the drainage uh, plastic pipe were actually clogging with bulk iron. So instead of putting another 
pipes, we suggested putting the coarse material in backfill that improved the situation. So moving on from um, electrical potential to um, DC methods of resistivity. Uh, as you see, that the Ohm's law show um, that resistivity is um, directly proportional of uh, potential divided by um, current. In the methods of resistivity, they used four electrode probe. The current is injected and measured uh, between outer A and B electrodes, and the potential is measured with EMN electrodes, uh, potential electrodes in the middle. There are different uh, arrangements. And also conductivity is the inverse of resistivity, so basically that's the same uh, techniques, although it kind of um, sounds like it's a different. So EC was became very uh, popular in modern agriculture, especially um, in the United States. There's um, a lot of companies like various technologies, Geonics and our company, um, also those new um, technologies, new devices and equipment allow to obtain fast, dense and accurate um, GIS compatible soil EC or ER, electrical resistivity measurements. Soil EC is related um, to several soil properties like um, bulk density, CEC, um, humus content and um, it can be used to outline management zones. Also, um, the important difference of modern technologies of geophysics, they measure uh, EC in, in the subsoil in different depths and uh, we can choose the depths which are more um, important for plant root growth depending on the our, uh, plant, it can be deeper or shallower. Uh, remote sensing on the other hand only uh, measure uh, spectral reflectance from the surface from the plant so it doesn't get much information about soil. Also, uh, on the go uh, EC sensor, measure um, soil EC non destructively and in situ, and they um, use a big soil volume. So it's more accurate actually about uh, to know about real condition in soil than a point soil sampling. And also, um, those sensors are very suitable for soil monitoring and time series uh, because uh, we don't collect samples. We can put um, the array on the top and measure um, different times of the year and reflect of um, water fluxes and different other different changes in soil profile. So there is a few different um, devices on the market now. I mean, they were developed the four electrode um, like um, pulley, um, like a plowing um, things uh, was developed by uh, USDA Salinity Lab and uh, commercialized by various technologies. And this is a DC equipment, this four electrode probe, or have a two depths simultaneously, and maximum, uh, usually about one meter maximum depth for those techniques. Um, there are also um, non contact um, electromagnetic uh, devices. This ohm mapper um, that's uh, used capacitive um, coupling, it's also like several electrodes, the same four electrode principle applied, and there are five depths. And there is also um, multi-frequency um, electromagnetic devices, which are um, going deeper, not because of the spread of the electrode, but because of the different frequencies. It can be measured in 14 depths. And also maximum of AC equipment is about, usually about 10 meters. Um, the small land mapper could be used um, instead of going in covering the whole field is very dense measurements. If you're only interested in some kind of um, travel spots, you can quickly go and take point measurements uh, with the land mapper and also can be as deep as meter or even even deeper than that uh, if there needs to be. But for mapping um, in agriculture purposes, usually one meter is um, the most um, interested depth. Actually, the first foot is the most um, of interest to the growers. Um, so, but important um, situation uh, important to consider is what kind of properties can we measure with electrical resistivity techniques. As um, I told before, those properties are directly related and uh, influence density of mobile electrical charges. Can be chemical properties, first of all, as soil co uh, salt content, um, CEC 
pumice content also if we have intrusions of high resistivity um, object in soil like stones or oil that can be mapped very uh, precisely uh, physical properties which influence uh, mobility of electrical charges is bulk density, water content, temperature, um, texture, soil texture, and so we can uh, monitor uh, physical uh, changes like water movement, soil freezing or melting, soil compaction or mixing. Um, most of techniques in use in agriculture and precision agriculture is EC technique of mapping. Um, I wanted to um, kind of show you the extension of this technique because other presenters will tell more about mapping uh, of EC, EC mapping and precision agriculture. I want to concentrate on um, uh, technologies of vertical electrical zoning. The vertical electrical zoning is different from mapping as you go um, from the one spot, you go measure multiple depths going uh, down the soil profile. You can easily customize the sounding just through different electro arrays, and also there is a lot of freeware available for 1D data interpretation. Uh, for example, um, the array or probe is four electrodes. In the vendors, you have equal distance between the electrodes. In Schlumberger, you keep uh, the potential electrodes in the middle, and then you uh, spread A and B electrodes farther and farther apart. This way you're reaching deeper and deeper. And the coefficient for center symmetric arrays, like a Schlumberger, um, is calculated by the geometrical formula distances between electrodes. And so in the, you can use the, um, a simple land mapper with uh, custom wires, and you can uh, spread the electrodes. And the, all the procedure is available on our website. So you can go and see how it's um, done in details. Then when you measure um, the profiles, you put the distance between A and B electrodes on their um, axis. And then that means it goes deeper when the A and B increases. So in this case, we could see that vertical electrical zoning profiles in that cranberry bed in New Jersey shows that uh, the depths of about um, uh, one one and a half meter, we have an iron layer which showing increase in electrical resistivity. That bulk iron layer. So also, the same was shown in in Russia, in in actually in, in Crim Crimea, uh, where we have uh, several uh, vertical electrical zoning profiles of stony soils, and they increase. So we developed it with showing that volumetric stone content and the electrical resistivity measured in city and how much uh, rocks and then the different orchard species was um, evaluated um, how well they can tolerate the stony soil and um, how to manage the orchards in that situation. Um, also, there, as I mentioned, that when the soil water freezes, it uh, changes um, electrical resistivity uh, dramatically. So when we set up the electrodes uh, in, the, in the fall and then in the spring when the snow started melting, we monitored how deep was the uh, frozen layer. In this case, the frozen layer was um, very shallow, um, about, um, about 30 centimeters or so. And then um, every day yeah. measurement the value of resistivity um, changes, and then as finally the whole profile on 16 of April was below 200 ohm meters. Also, that this VS profiles can show the drying depths on the peat soils. And it was a particular dry summer when the whole um, like first um, half a meter of uh, peat soil was extremely dry versus when it's wet. You can see this profile here. And the same situation was in arid condition in the Volga Delta. There is a sandy soil but uh, have a evaporation uh, water condition. So in the ground water table is about um, two five meters. For the VS curve you can see the twist 
to the kind of um, low resistivity which is um, potable or salty water in this case it's salty water you can see very low resistivity in this case it also changes but the water is uh, less salty also we can I mean it's pretty accurate method if you don't want to um, drill the borehole to find ground water table in first um, couple of meters we get about 8% error uh, VS versus real borehole data also um, with vertical electrical zoning it's um, pretty quickly to do because it's about 15 measurements on one spot uh, but also some researchers use 2D and even 3D um, resistivity studies um, and they use multiplexing of different arrays for 2D for example um, it's still possible uh, doing manually although you're talking about about nine eight hundred um, data points for one study so that can be uh, difficult to do right. manually That's although some researchers use the used um, our device and um, kind of um, custom multiplexer to measure preferential water flow under the um, corn there is field. also a lot of um, conventional geophysics equipment can be adapted um, for those studies and those sta stationary uh, DC equipment measure three electrical parameters self-potential, electrical resistivity and induced polarization and different depths can be achieved through the electrode spacing and combination and those equipment can be used in the lab to measure the same um, properties in the soil samples also the multiplexing of uh, four electrode arrays usually automatic those are websites from EPA and you see the limits of different equipment and for agricultural study you don't need a very powerful um, signal actually two micro ampere is enough and, but there is available equipment and um, for example cyber using 48 electrodes and the whole system is about 18,000 basically since this equipment is um, can measure several properties it's um, necessary to have a setup um, how to use it in agronomy survey so uh, we kind of suggested seven step approach first is that you need to select um, location of vertical electrical zoning based on the maps for the area then conduct uh, vertical electrical zoning for the major soil and select the depths for the specific soil horizons then map um, area with um, two five key depths and create the um, survey maps and GIS um, then get the samples and measure resistivity in the samples and soil properties in the lab and then we can invert resistivity maps to the maps of soil properties. That's kind of quick overview that's what we did in um, uh, in a field near Moscow what was 90 VS test location and um, about 400 multi depths um, stations. Maybe basically, map. those are resistivity maps of different layers 10 centimeters, 30, 60, and almost 5 meters. Then we measure um, soil properties in the lab, and of course, there was exponential relationship be between clay content and resistivity, there was a uh, um, coefficient of filtration, the water content and the field capacity of those samples. Then the electrical resistivity at the deepest layer presented here was inverted into clay content map, filtration coefficient map and the field capacity map. So in the conclusion you can see that resistivity and self-potential are complementary methods. They we see uh, resistivity and electrical potential outline density of mobile electrical charges in soil and electrical parameters relate with amount and mobility of electrical charges with exponential relationship and often the same equipment can be used to measure EC or resistivity and a self potential with different accessory and electrodes according to Ohm's law Again, resistivity is directly proportional to potential, and uh, EC is inverse of resistivity. 
Self potential in agriculture can be applied to monitor subsurface water fluxes and functionality of the drains, and also could be used to find um, placement for portable water wells. And natural electrical potential between soil horizons facilitate plant growth and decrease in electrical potential difference between soil and plant indicate plant stress. However, we can create favorable um, potential difference uh, in soils by media layering and applying weak electrical current of boring different metal spikes in soil profiles. EC methods in agriculture can be used to um, monitor one soil property which is changes uh, resistivity dramatically like in freezing uh, melting circles, solution transport or drying wetting. We also can map soil properties which highly influence electrical parameters uh, such as salinity, stone content, hard pan, oil pollution, groundwater table. And also we can evaluate complex effect of many soil properties of measured on measured electrical resistivity, we can develop management zones or study soil cover structure. And at the end, um, as I said, the two techniques, potential and resistivity, are complementary, and there are devices which can be uh, used to measure both. And this is a um, land mapper, which device is handheld, and uh, you can go to landadvisor.net and download publications and more information about methods and uh, devices and um, please contact us and we can help you with your project.